Well, good morning. Welcome to North Salem Baptist Church. I don't get to do this very often, and I'm going to stand up here one day. I'm going to admit it to you right now. I'm going to stand up here one day, and I'm going to say the wrong church name. So if I do that, you just forgive me, because I've done this in a couple of different churches, and I'm going to come up with the wrong name one day. But I got it right today. Uh, we want to welcome you, those of you that are joining us online. Uh, thank you for being with us this morning as well. A couple of quick announcements before we get started. First of all, you notice there's no screen over my head. Many of you may have seen the uh, Facebook post that Q did earlier in the week, uh, Friday, if I believe it was. We have our new monitors. He told you last week there was wire hanging out of the wall. They got mounted Friday afternoon. So this is our first, uh, first Sunday using the new, the new screen monitors on each side. Uh, as Q said last week and then again on the, uh, on the video that he posted about it, the biggest choice you're going to have is which one do I look at. So anyway, so that's a, that's a praise uh, for those being, those being done. I know it's been a long time, long time coming. Uh, the second thing is um, yesterday. Yesterday was a huge, hugely successful day in the life of our church. And there are so many people that need to be thanked. I would not even start to try to name any of them. Uh, but just to let you know some of the numbers that I've seen from what was done. 177 pounds of Boston Buck was cooked. 30 pounds of green beans. Something in the neighborhood of 70 pounds of potato salad, something like that. Uh, 14 or 15 pound cakes. What did we do? In case you don't know what I'm talking about, but I think all of you do. We did a plate sale. And, and so there was so much effort going into it. 300 plates were sold. Okay. There was a bunch of people that came by. So I watched it. People came by. Rachel said, what's your name? Oh, I didn't order any plates. I just want to donate money. So thank you for what you did. Thank you for caring enough to, to be the hands of Jesus and serving others. And uh, thank you. Thank you. And Lisa, we love you. All right. Um, last thing that I have this morning before we get started on our first song is we want to also be in prayer for Q. Q is traveling today. He left this morning uh, going to uh, Louisiana. He's going to be working with the uh, Georgia Baptist Convention Disaster Relief and uh, doing what he loves to do and running a chainsaw. And uh, so we want to be in prayer for him not only today as he travels, but all week long as he works long hours. Uh, I've never done it with a chainsaw part, but I've done storm restoration work uh, when I was with Georgia Power in the days the days and the work is long and hard. So we want to be in prayer for him for safety through the week and then certainly as he travels back uh, next week. With that, I'm not even going to do any real introduction. Uh, Billy will be preaching for us this morning. I said, what do you want to say? He said, say I'm preaching and that's all you need to say. So Billy will be coming to preach for us in just a few minutes after we sing. Uh, is there anything else that we need to hear or know about in the life of the church before we move on? Everybody hear that? Green beans still available that we had left over. They were refrigerated overnight, I promise you. <laughs> but they're in the foyer. They're in a little, little, I won't say individual servings. There are probably two or three servings in each one, but you're welcome to take those on the way, on the way out this morning. With that being said, uh, let me open us up with a word of prayer, and then we'll move into our first song, To God Be the Glory. Heavenly Father, we do want to give you the praise and glory. We want to thank you, Lord, for loving us. We want to thank you, Lord, for providing your Son in our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we can have a right relationship with you. And, Lord, one day we can spend eternity with you. Lord, as we go through this worship service this morning, we pray your blessings upon the songs that are sung. Lord, we lift up to you, Brother Billy, as he brings the message this morning that you have laid upon his heart. Just fill him with your power and your spirit. Let the words he speak, speaks this morning be the words we need to hear and the message you have for our hearts this very day. Again, Lord, we love you. We thank you 
for your love for us. And we pray all of those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me invite you to stand as we sing together to God be the glory. have all showed up with a desire to worship God. Just as the song said, to God be the glory, for he has done great things for us. This morning we're going to start in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to be talking about Noah for a little bit. Because Noah listened to God when God told him to build an ark. And, go, and as, a, as we'll see when we read the scripture, God, Noah did exactly what God had commanded him. Noah was a man of God. We're called to be also to be children of God. So if you would, open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 6, and we'll start in verse 6, uh, correction, verse 13. It said, And God said to Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover it inside and outside with pitch. Verse 22 says, Thus Noah did, according to all that God commanded him, so he did. Let us pray. Father, I thank you this morning for this opportunity to stand here and deliver your message, Father. I pray, Lord, you'll hide me behind the cross, that the words I speak this morning be your words, that the voice that is heard this morning is your voice. Father, use me and use, uh, use us as a church, Father, to bring you the glory. Father, I give you the honor, glory, and praise for it all. For it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. So, 
As we just read, God used Noah in a mighty way. He built an ark. But I want, you to, I want to draw your uh, attention to one thing first. When God went to Noah, he was already planning on destroying the earth and every living thing in it. But what, how does he do it? He goes to Noah and he tells him, the end of all flesh is, the, is coming. The end of all flesh is coming. Then he tells him he needs to build an ark. He told him what was about to happen. Then he tells him what to do. So what makes us think today that God's not able to use us in a mighty way? Why isn't God able to use us in a mighty way? Because we're disobedient. We, we are disobedient children who the Father, unfortunately, has to get our attention often for us to do what God's called us to do. Let me say that again. We are disobedient. Think about your own walk this morning with God. Are you where God would have you to be? Are you doing what God has called you to do? If not, that's disobedience. Plain and simple, disobedience. The main reason we're disobedient because we're not listening to God. We are not listening to God as Noah listened to him. Yes, God spoke personally to Noah. But listen, he, listens, he speaks to us today too. We just have to have our ears open and our hearts open to listen to God. You know, whether it's intentional or not, we're not listening. But we, what, we're, what we are doing, we're listening to the world to teach, telling us how we're to worship God. The very world that we need to be telling about Jesus Christ, the very world that we're to, we are to go out into and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, to proclaim repentance of sin, we're listening to them to tell us how to worship God. It's not hard to, t it's not hard to understand. Look around you today. Look at churches today that are closing their doors. That's because they're not worshiping God. They're not listening. You know, it's time for the church to be the church. And quit listening to the world. We need to start listening to God. We need to start listening to what He's telling us to do. Because when we do, it will change our hearts. When we start listening to God, we'll, we will, our hearts will be changed. And when our hearts are changed, guess what? We'll start walking differently than the world. We'll start walking in the ways of Jesus. We'll start walking in the way that God has for us. And brothers and sisters, that's what I, I esteem to do every day is to walk like Jesus. When we walk like Jesus, the world sees that we're different. And when we, when we are different, they want to know what we have that they don't have. And that opens the door for each and every one of us to tell them about our Jesus. Now don't answer this, just, just think about it in your own heart. When's the last time I told someone about Jesus? When's the last time I made an effort to tell someone about Jesus? I can I give, I'm giving praise to God this morning. I, I got the chance last week to not only tell somebody about it, but I got to share the plan of salvation. Now, the rest is up to them and Jesus. But I did what I, God has commanded me to do, tell others about Jesus, about the free gift of salvation that each and every one of us that has submitted to the will of God have earned. As I said a while ago, we're called to be like Jesus, like our Lord and our Savior. And, I, and you understand this, when He walked this earth, the world didn't like Him. They were trying to kill Him. So it makes us think that the world's going to like us if we're walking like Jesus. We have to walk different, brothers and sisters. We have to be different. And it all begins with listening to God. It all begins when we open our ears to the voice of our Heavenly Father. But our problem is we often want to do all the talking. We want to, our prayer life is, God, give me, give me, give me, heal this person, help this person, amen, and we get up and go about our own business. We're not listening to what God's trying to tell us in our heart. So I, I, I want to ask the question this morning. When's the last time you got along with God in your prayer and you finished your prayer and you listened 
to God. See, when we stop talking, that's when God starts talking. And that's when we need to start listening. If we're not listening, then we're, we're not able to do what God's calling us to do. We're not, we're not able to do the things that God has called us to do when we don't listen. You know, it's a wonderful thing when we do shut up and listen and when God starts speaking to your heart. That's a feeling that this world cannot give us. That's a peace that this world can't give us. Brothers and sisters, God wants that relationship. He wants that personal relationship with us. He wants to talk to us. He wants us to talk to Him. But in the conversation, you've got to have a hearer and you've got to have a listener. I make mean, a correction. A speaker and a listener. And it works both ways. But understand, in order for us to listen, we must deny ourselves fully and rely fully upon God. We have to each day get up and deny ourselves. We have to give control of our life every day to God. We have to be fully committed to what He's calling us to do. We have to be fully committed to His Word. We have to be fully committed to do what He's calling us to do. We cannot serve the world and God at the same time. We cannot serve the world, brothers and sisters, and do the will of God. We must, we must give control to God each and every day. We need, to, we need to know what God is calling us to do in our lives. And the only way we do that, as I said earlier, is to listen. But we also must be 100% 100 committed when we do listen. I want to bring back to your attention, Jesus was 100% committed when he was nailed to that cross. When he yielded up his life and laid in the tomb for three days. He rose again, and guess what? He's sitting at the right hand of the God the Father. That's 100% commitment. He done the will of the Father all the way to the grave and, and all, all the way to the throne of God. He done the will of God. And that's what we're called to do, brothers and sisters. We're called to do the will of God. God provides all our needs. God provides for us. And brothers and sisters, if you haven't received a blessing in a while, I, I, I pray that you'll look at your walk with the Lord. He's not going to bless disobedience. He's going to bless obedience. Are you fully committed this morning, or are you holding back? Are we as a church, as well as individual, giving God first place in our life, or have we been disobedient to God? That's questions we need to ask ourselves each and every day. That's questions that I ask myself every day. Am I serving God or am I serving myself? Am I walking in the will of God or am I walking in the way of the, war, way of the world? Am I doing what my Father in heaven has told me to do or am I trying to do it on my own? That's questions we need to ask ourselves each and every day. And guess what? If we listen to God, He'll tell us what we're doing wrong. He will tell us where we need to get stronger. He will tell us what we need to be doing. But also, He'll provide. He will provide for our needs. He will provide, equip us to walk in this dark world. He will equip us to tell others about His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. So, it comes down to when we start listening, when we start allowing God to talk to our hearts and we're 100% committed, we have a construction phase, as I call it. What I mean by that, as we read in uh, Genesis chapter 6 this morning, Noah was told exactly how to build the ark. He was given every, every instruction. He said, build this ark with gopher wood, make many rooms in it, cover it with pitch. We didn't read this part, but as he went on to tell Noah the length of the, of the ark, the width, the height, where he wanted the window, everything. He gave Noah every detail to build that ark. He equipped Noah to build it. Now, I've got an a, a imagination that's a little different sometimes. As I re read this story about Noah building an ark, I can, I can see the community around him making fun of him. Think about it. He was being different. 
And the community was making fun of him probably. They was probably harassing him. They was probably even trying to uh, discourage him from building it. Think about that. That's what the world's doing to us today. It's they're trying to discourage us from doing what God has called us to do. When we let go of this world and become fully committed, God will equip you too. God will equip each and every one of us. You know, God has also given us every detail we need to know on building the church. Think about it for a moment. He's given us every detail that we'll need to know to build His church. But like Noah, we can only build a church one soul at a time. What I mean by that is, I don't mean only one person at a time can get saved, no. But you can only tell one person at a time about Jesus Christ. You can only lead somebody to Jesus one at a time. You might get a family every now and then, but most of the time it's one person at a time. Just like Noah, he built the ark one board at a time, putting the boards up, eventually finishing the outside of the ark, and then start working on the inside, one board at a time. So that's what we're called to do. God commanded Noah to build the ark, but guess what? He's commanding us to tell the world about their need for Jesus. Noah did as commanded. Can that be said about us today? Can that be said about the church today that we're doing as commanded, that we are doing what God has called us to do, to be the messenger for Him? Each one of us that has been saved, we know the message. And, we, and because we know how our life was prior to being saved, we should, know, we should be wanting to tell others about our Jesus. We should be wanting to tell the world, this is what we have, and you can have it too. This is the light of Jesus. Please come out of the darkness to it. And tell them why. It's easy as that. That's what we need to start saying, brothers and sisters. Excuse me. But you know why we're not doing it? It's a thing I call spiritual laziness spiritual laziness that's somebody that has got their salvation they know Jesus as their Lord and Savior but every time they're asked to do something I can't do that every time they see a need they don't, do, they don't worry about it they're sitting in a pew and they're, they're not concerned about anything but themselves so just what does spiritual laziness look like spiritual laziness is when a person does not get excited about worshiping God. Spiritual laziness is when Bible study has become an afterthought. They don't, they don't know what to say when they pray, if they pray. And they do not have any questions about God or the Bible. They're not, they are not focused upon godly things. They're focused upon worldly things. That is spiritual laziness, brothers and sisters. And sadly, many, many, many people have fallen into that today. Many are just going through the motions. They're checking off a box. They come to church on Sunday morning, check off the box. They come to church on, on Wednesday evening, check off the box. They go to Bible study, check off the box. But that's as far as it goes. They're not using it to further the kingdom of God. Noah built the ark, once again, Noah built the ark one board at a time. We build the church one soul at a time. But understand, we cannot build a church if we're spiritual lazy, if we're not committed to God, and if we're not focused upon the things of God. So you've got to be 100% committed. You've got to be listening to God. You've got to be in God's Word. And when we're all that... Our heart is focused upon God. And that makes us want to do the things of God. God is taking care of every one of us in here by providing us the free gift of salvation. But guess what? Along with that gift, He called us to share that gift with others. We are to share that gift with others. What I'm about to say, don't misconstrue it. But we do not need this world. We do not need this world. This world needs us. Because we are simply the messengers with the message God has for it. And that message is repentance. Repentance. 
The only way this will happen is if we're 100% committed. The only way this happens if we take our life and give it to God and say, make me, mold me, use me in your way. See, we can't stand on the sidelines, brothers and sisters. We have to get in the battle. Every day we got to get up and put our armor on. Every day we got to put that spiritual armor on in order to do what God's called us to do. If you're not getting up in the Word of God, if you're not reading the Word of God, if you're not doing what God's called you, you cannot fight this war. The world is winning right now, brothers and sisters. We know who owns the victory, and that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Revelation tells us that. To God be the glory. It was a perfect song to start with this morning. And brothers and sisters, I truly try to give God the glory in all that I do. Do I always? No. But I strive to do it. I fail sometimes, but I still strive to do it. And that's the way we, each and every one of us that we call ourselves Christians should strive to do. So what does 100%, 100% committed to God look like? Matthew chapter 28, starting in verse 19. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of, age, end of the age. Amen. Look at verse 20 there. What's it say? Teaching them to observe all things. We are called to teach, each and every one of us. And we do that by our lifestyle, by, our, by the way we walk, the way we talk. We teach the world what it's like to be like Jesus. Luke chapter 24, verse 46 says, this, Then he look, said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. It was necessary. That's what we need to tell the world. Verse 47, And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. Verse 48, And, there, and you are witnesses to these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. Brothers and sisters, we are called as a church, as well as individuals, to tell the world of Jesus. If we're not doing that, we're being disobedient. So, we understand this morning so far that we need to listen. We need to prepare our hearts. We need to be fully committed. But what does delivering the message look like? What does delivering the message look like? Look at uh, Matthew chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judah and crying, Repent, for the kingdom of God, kingdom of the heaven is at hand, or kingdom of God in some translations. John the Baptist, before Jesus came on the scene, was preparing the way for the Lord by preaching repentance. By preaching and telling people they need to repent of their sins. Because the kingdom of heaven is on its way. That's the same message we're to preach. We're to teach. Because the kingdom of heaven is coming. The book of Revelation tells us that the kingdom of heaven is coming. We don't know the time. We don't know the date. But we do know what's going to happen up to when he returns. We know that we have the victory. We have to show the world we have the victory. And they can be part of it also. We're talking about, talking about Paul in Acts chapter 26. It says, and when, he had, and when he had fallen to the ground, I heard a voice speaking to me, saying in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It's hard for you to kick against the goads. So I say, I said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, who you are persecuting. I am Jesus who you are persecuting. 
But look at what he says next. He says, but rise and stand. In other words, get on your feet. For I appear to you for this purpose to make you a minister and a witness both to, of the things in which you have seen and of the things which you will yet, well, which yet I will reveal to you. I'm sorry. I will deliver you from the Jewish people, and I will as well as the Gentiles to whom I now send you. See, he told Paul, he says, I'm delivering you from these people. They, I'm going to protect you, but you've got to go to them now. He says, this is why he's got to go to them. Verse 18, he says, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of their sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. See, he told Paul, or at that time Saul, to, uh, that he was been sent to the Gentiles. To bring them from their dark world into the light of Jesus. That they may repent of their sin and receive salvation. Receive the inheritance in heaven. You understand when you got saved, you had eternal life in heaven. When you got saved, you were given eternal life in heaven. You don't earn that. You don't earn it. It was given to you. You don't earn salvation. It was given to you. You just have to receive it. We can only receive it by submitting to God. We can, only be submit, we can only receive it by being willing and being 100% committed for God to use us. Both John the Baptist and Paul were fully committed. Their life is an example to us on how we are to, how we are to strive to be like Jesus. I understand Paul. I, Paul was, I love Paul. But most of his writings and most of his preaching was done while he was in prison. He had a Roman soldier chained to him most of the time. He had a Roman soldier with him as he was preaching. It didn't deter him one bit. He told the world about Jesus. What's holding us back? What's holding us back? Noah was fully committed Noah was fully committed. He was also focused upon the things, uh, things of God. We too should be focused at the task at hand. We need to get focused, church, for, that, for we have been committed to, commanded to preach and teach repentance to this dark world around us. We have been commanded to teach and preach repentance to this dark world around us. We cannot do it, though, when we're not listening, when we're not committed, because there's no way. God can still use us. Don't get me wrong. God can still use us in our disobedience to save others. But, oh, but what a blessing we miss when we're disobedient. When we're disobedient, we miss out on many blessings. Because we're not listening to the, to the power of God. When we start listening, when we start being committed, when we start for being focused on the, t the task at hand, the Lord will bless, bless in a mighty way. I can hear some of us now saying, I'm not called to preach or teach. I'm not, God can't use me. I don't know what to say. You know, I've used some of them excuses myself. Especially when he called me into the ministry. I said, God, nah, you can't use me, Lord. Uh, that's not me. But guess what? When we're fully trusting in God, and God's called us to do something, we can do it. Because it's not us doing it. It's God doing it in us and through us. When God's called us to do something, church, He's doing it through us. He's equipping us to do it. So it's time to stand up and do it. There's no power in this world that can defeat the power of God living inside of us. Let me say that again. There's no power in this world that can defeat the power of God living in each and every one of us. It is time for us, the church, to put our feet on the ground and our voices in the air. Put our feet on the ground and our voices in the air. 
It's time for us, the church, to do as we're commanded. To tell the world about our Jesus. To preach and teach repentance to the world around us. I want each and every one of us this week to take assertive effort. To look at our lives before we got saved. And look at your life now. Think what you were before you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And look at your life now after you've been saved. And think, oh, how wonderful that would be to tell someone else they can have the same thing. Because that's what we're called to do. We have to listen to God in order to do it. We have to be committed to God. We have to be obedient. Noah was obedient. He did as commanded. Again, are we doing as commanded? But unfortunately, like Noah, unlike Noah, many are setting back today. Many are setting back, don't want to hear the message because it's, it's, it's weighing on the heart. But brothers and sisters, that's a message that we need to be reminded of, that we need to be reminded of daily. We are warriors in a spiritual battle, but we're not fighting it alone. We have the armor of God. We have the armor of God that we need each and every day to fight this spiritual battle. As I said earlier, this world's not our home. This world, we do not need this world. But we, but the world needs us because we have the message it needs to hear. It has the message we need to hear. You know, it's a shame that we have salvation and we know how it changed us. However, Many are standing on the sidelines watching people go by each and every day on their way to hell. We are standing on the sidelines watching people go by each and every day as they go to hell. When it be so simple just to say, let me tell you about my Jesus. Let me tell you what he's done in my life. Let me tell you what he's doing in my life. He can do the same thing in yours. See, we're ne- when they're standing there watching these people walk by, they're not saying anything. We're not saying anything. We're not telling the world because, quite frankly, many churches today are afraid of losing their tax-free status. Many are afraid of what the world might, might make them do. But guess what? Who's in control? God the Father's in control. Not this world. Don't, 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 don't misunderstand that. This world is not in control. God is fully in control of what's going on. And quite frankly, brothers and sisters, I believe he's trying to get this country's attention. I believe he's trying to get our attention, brothers and sisters, for us to stand up and be the church. For us to go out into the mission field in our neighborhoods and tell others about Jesus. Not only just telling, but providing for needs. Providing for needs in the community, within the church and outside the church. See, we're called to be ambassadors for God. And if we're not doing that, we're being disobedient. It should break our heart. It really, truly should break our heart each time somebody walks by us and we don't tell them about Jesus if we know that they're on their way to hell. If you've got family members you know who are not saved, if you've got friends who you know that's not saved, it should break our heart and we should be willing We should be wanting to tell them about Jesus. Will everybody listen to us when we tell them? No. But what you do then, you pray for them. You pray for them. Because when you start telling them about Jesus, and you start praying for them, there's no other power in this world that can stop that. And then it's up to them to accept it or not. Just like we did. My part of my testimony, my wife prayed for me. She told me about Jesus. And I kept telling her, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. Her and her little church that she was going to continued to pray for me. And I'm here today as a witness that prayer works. I'm here today as a witness that when somebody loves you enough to pray for you and pray for you and pray for you, God works. He worked on my heart. And I, and I, 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 I I've never looked back. I remember when I first got saved, and she could tell you the same thing. I was overseas. And I started writing letters home, what I read, what I thought about it, 
what God had showed me. I was excited. And that's, that's the excitement we need to have each and every day when we are in our word with God. We need to be excited about it. We need to get excited. We need to be so excited that the world looks at us and says, what do you have we don't have? And that's when we say, I have Jesus. I have Jesus. I have a peace that you can't give me. I have a peace this world we cannot even come close to. And that's through my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In closing this morning, I want to bring a few, few points that we need to remember. We cannot do anything if we're disobedient to God. Obedience starts when we listen to God and not this world. When we deny ourselves daily and start being 100% fully committed to God. That's where it starts. In our prayer life, we need to listen to God. This is what it should look like. We pray. We listen. God speaks. We move into action. If you allow God to speak to your heart and you listen, you can't help but move into action. You have a desire to be in His will. On that narrow path to heaven, the, lo- the path less walked, as the Bible puts it. Well, Noah was a witness to God, what God was about to do. As I said earlier, we also are witnesses of what God's about to do. If you read the very last chapter, last two chapters of Revelation, you will see in there where God brings judgment upon this earth. We, don't, we will not be part of that judgment, but we will have to give. We will, have to give uh, we will be held responsible for what we did and did not do. When you was given that opportunity to do something and we didn't do it. We have to give an account for that, brothers and sisters. I want to be able to stand in front of my, my God on that day and say, and hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. Because that's what we are, we're servants. I pray that each and every one of us is be willing to listen to God. I pray that we will open our hearts and our ears, not to this world, but to God. It begins with us and our heart. What's your heart focused on this morning? Is it focused on the thing of God, things of God, or is it focused on the world? Are you being spiritually lazy, or are you on fire for God? The decision lies with each and every one of us on how we walk with God. Let us pray. Father, I thank you for this morning. Your message is very simple, Lord. We, we are to tell others what Jesus has done for us. What he did for us, Father, upon the cross. What he did, Father, as he was beaten before he was put on the cross. Father, he was 100% committed to doing your will. That's the example we should be wanting to follow, Father. Not this world, but your will. We should be wanting to listen to you, Father, as you speak to us. Father, you, you done told us you provide for all our needs. We, did, we don't walk this world alone. We, we walk it in Jesus. So, Father, help us remember that this week, Father. Help us to remember that we, we are your children. We are commanded to tell others about Jesus. And, Father, I thank you. And, Father, I give you the honor, glory, and praise for it all. For it's in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen.
Yes, yes. Yeah. 